Yofi. Okay, so as I said to you, so I said to you before that kind of a key part of Musa on Rosh Hashanah and and on Yom Kippur, kind of the you know the the culmin, the highlight, right? That everything is moving towards this almost line, this one sentence in in our tefillah of here in bold, that repentance, prayer, and charity remove, uh, destroy, get rid of this evil, evil decree. Um, and kind of the question, the, and we'll, I'll, I'll, we'll look at the tefillah itself in a moment, but I'm sure when when you were in yeshiva and if you obviously when you uh, when you prayed on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur Yom Kippur before this moment itself almost is the culmination of all the tefillot right it all comes to this point and I kind of a question which we could perhaps kind of which I just I mentioned to you before is. I mean, there's many, many questions. Why these three? What, what's significant about these three? What's also interesting, right? I mean, particularly every year, this prayer, Unatane um, Tokef, where we talk about kind of the year coming up and essentially focusing on who will live, who will die, and how in the, what be the fate of every individual during the coming year. And it's, it's powerful to think back at where we were a year ago, before Rosh Hashanah began, and where we are now and what the world looks like. Perhaps more than any other year. I know personally for me, and I'm sure for many, many people, that when like thinking about this year, um, mm -hmm. how much has happened and how much can change and what the world looks like now to what it used to look like, that kind of really hits deep, a big gut punch. And so there's two, two kind of key questions here. Let's see if we can explore these, explore these together. The first question is really here. What does it mean to change God's mind? Right, that if, if an individual, if the world is set on a certain path, how can it be that performing these three actions of teshuva, tefillah, and staka can change God's mind on a philosophical level, on a philosophical level, right? Which I'm sure you, you've encountered before in your studies of Rambam and Maharal and whoever else. What does that mean to change God, change, change, change God's mind? And the second question, which is also, I mean, what does it mean, right? Does it mean one of these, all of these? And what is significant? Um, do you have any, what, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on this, on some of the things I've just raised, Victor? Um, on the first question, I think may, uh the meaning of change uh, God's mind is in regards of uh, change the decree that you may have for the next year, right? So, uh, for example, with uh, Tzedakah, uh, it means that you take care of uh, your neighbor and you are fulfilling like one positive mitzvah of the uh, Haftalah right? To love your neighbor as, uh, as yourself. And prayer, because we are communicating with God and to let him know, I mean, even though he knows what's on your mind, what's in your heart, um, you are communicating with him, what are your needs and all that. And repentance um, means that you are changing something that is maybe bad or wrong in, in yourself and you try to be a better person, right? So Love that. that's, yeah, I think that we'll, we'll uh, answer the two questions at the same time. I, mean, no, I think you're right. Look, there's, there's a piece of beautiful. I mean, I'm going to take it. I mean, it's interesting the order that you put it in. So I, mean, I think it works in any way, but I think what you said is, is beautiful. Where one begins like purely from within, 
right? Purely individual, like the, an individual's responsibility to themselves mm -hmm. of teshuva, of repentance. That is an individual's responsibility to take a look at who they are and how they act, what their mm -hmm. values are, and what they want to change about those. Purely individual, right? understanding mm -hmm. that you as an in, you are the only individual you can control. The only individual you can control is yourself. But the only person's emotions you can control is yourself. Prayer, you said again, I'm just repeating back what you said. It was so, it was so, it was so, it was perfect, right? Prayer is, a, is that next level out, right? Prayer is the next level out because you're now moving away from just yourself and realizing you cannot just rely on yourself. You have to rely on the Almighty, you have to rely on God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's more powerful, more important, particularly today, right? When we're not, we're not necessarily looking at uh, uh, like the times of Tanakh, uh, let's say when the people in Tanakh had a stronger connection with God and relied on miracles, etc. But charity, one could see, is the is the foundation of society foundation of community but now i focused on myself i focused on a connection to maybe something spiritual something something outside but maybe something which is difficult to describe mm -hmm. charity is that built the building of society and really perhaps you're right you're right and i and i don't i would even go a step further and say i don't even know we're talking about changing god's mind maybe I think there is, I think that to get, it's like almost getting around the question, right? That if God is, knows everything and God is all powerful, how can a prayer from us, a, a insignificant human being change God's mind? Perhaps right, this tefillah is not about that. This tefillah is if you are able to better yourself as an individual, and if you realize there is more to this world than just you and just the physical, and finally, if you understand that you as an individual can only be uplifted, can only, be, can only succeed, can only become something bigger than yourself by being a part of a community and following the, the beautiful phrase of Aftalarecha Kamocha, only then can we perhaps try our best at least to stop these things from happening or at least mm -hmm. prevent them as much as can, right? Meaning, I think, let's say again, I know that like, I think Russia, um, it's gonna be, oh, it's gonna be oh, like a lot of people are gonna be talking about it, right? Who by plague, okay? Who by magi fa, but I, I, yeah, but whatever, whatever. Um, but, we all know, right, the, the, the responsibility the individual has and how the role that individual plays within a community to stop the spread of COVID-19. I, I won't say that word again. But when you look at who dies by famine and who dies by thirst, those pieces are really part of a society, what societies should try and prevent. Mm -hmm. Yes, individuals are in that place. And I don't think necessarily even it, it, should, it shouldn't be that we start with looking at changing God's mind, but changing the, the world that we live in. And I think if you were to look at each of these, who will suffer, who will be impoverished, who will be enriched, all of this, all of this is down to the ability to change myself, the ability for me to see that I'm a part of something bigger and therefore pray. And then therefore also Charity is like a, this, a symbol of the building of society. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's basically what you said. I just kind of repeat, <laughs> I just repeated it. I just repeated it. Um, but yeah, I think, and so that's that. And again, again, I'm not, I'm not trying to take God, I'm not taking God out of this, but there is an underlying, there is an underlying sense of where, where is our responsibility in all of this? Mm -hmm. um, let's take a look at this this piece of uh, this Gemara. Um, so also give us like a nice nice idea as to 
So we can look at so this Gemara. Are you, is it okay if we read, if I go to the English, would you prefer the Aramaic? Um, I don't have it in Spanish. I'm really sorry. That That's okay. Uh, I mean, my, I mean, I'm not very good in elucidating and translating, but I think I prefer the English for the moment. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie, Victor. My, I, I mean, I'm not, my Aramaic is not great, but it's better than my Spanish. Um, <laughs> but then we'll, go, we'll go for the English. Okay, Rav Yitzchak said, four things cause the decree against a person to be torn up, i.e. four things cause, a de cause this uh, decree to end, to be destroyed. Charity, prayer, changing of a person's name, and changing of a person's conduct or behavior, how they behave. Mm -hmm. Charity, as it's written, because of charity, because of the Pasuk in Mishle, because of charity delivers, saves someone from death. Prayer, as it is written, then they cried to Hashem in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress in Tehillim. Where do we know that changing one's name that can save you from a, an evil decree. As for Sarai, your wife, you shall call her by Sarai, but now Sarah shall change her name. And it continues, and I will bless her, and moreover, I will give her, I give her a son, i.e., in the story of Abraham and Sarai and Sarah. Only when Sarah changed her name did she, was she then able to have a child, and no longer was she... Uh, barren. No longer was she unable to con to have it to, to become pregnant. And finally, how do you know that changing your behavior will rip up the evil decree? And God saw their works, and God repented of the evil which He said He would do unto them, and He did, and and He did it, and He did it not. From the story of Yona, from the story of Ninveh, right of the evil city mm -hmm. Ninveh, and only when they changed their behavior did God save them. So it's proof, according to the Gemara that if you then change your behavior, are you, an, an evil decree will be destroyed. Some say that changing a place, meaning moving somewhere else, also works. Now Hashem said to Avraham, Avram, sorry, go out of your country and proceed, and I will make you a great nation. And, 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 and the other, why does he not <clears throat> add this in? Why does Rav Yitzchak not include moving to a different place? In that case, it was the merit of the land of Israel which availed him. Meaning, only, only if you move to Israel, Victor, can you then, um, can, can an evil decree be torn up? So, what better reason to move from Guatemala? Sure. <laughs> so, it's not, it's, not, it's, it's not to do with the move, like, unlike all of the other ones. Um, I don't know. I mean, I mean to, just to read into this Gemara a bit more. Um, the changing of a name also seems to have like a, has also has like a set like another like line underneath of you can't just you have to kind of add something spiritual or connected to Hashem into your name in order in theory for it to work. Um, but apparently here is just very specific. Only by moving to Israel does that remove the decree, and that's why Rav Yitzchak didn't include it. So the question is. Question is, um, I mean, these two questions aren't so re relevant to us, but let's go, let's, let's go to this one. Why, what do you think it is? Look, these two, changing of name isn't mentioned. Isn't mentioned in the Tzfilah on Rosh Hashanah, right? Charity is, prayer is, change of behavior is the Teshuvah, is the repentance. What, what's the deal with changing, changing of a name? What have you heard about that before? What do you think? Why, what, what's the significance of that? And why isn't it? Why do we mention it in our tefillah? Um, I think uh, our Hebrew names or our names are part of uh, our uh, essence. So changing your name, um, the only the only uh, like a situation where I, I know that you can change your name is only if you are um, about to die or anything like that, right? Right. For example, when you are sick and you change your name to Chaim or Raphael. I don't know. Yeah. So 
yeah with with Sarah I think like changing her name was like a way of Hashem to change the decree against her with Abraham I don't know if with Abraham was is like a, almost the same uh, the same story because I mean he was very rich he was he always had his good traits like uh, like he was uh, always uh, open to receive people and he was like uh, the representation of Hesed, right? Um, so I don't know how to answer that question. About no, no, what... that's, they, look, this, this one, I tell you, yeah, I, this one, I don't know. This question is like, is not so relevant for here, but I think it does give us a, a it, you, are, you, but you essentially answered it, I think. I mean, there is no right or wrong answer, but I think what you said makes sense that the changing of a name seems to be, at least in our tradition, only really done when there's something like affecting you right now. Meaning if you are, <laughs> if you are sick, or let's say in Sarah's case, she, was, she wanted to have children and she was unable to have children. In that case, she changed her name or God forbid someone is sick. Um, then they, we changed their name, exactly said, adding in Raphael or Chaim or something like that. Whereas with, in, with the Tefillah here and Rosh Hashanah, it's more general. It's not trying necessarily to address a particular specific issue, but one which is far, far more general. Um, and I think you're right. With the case of Avram to Avraham, that particular name change wasn't necessarily to, to right a wrong or to save him from any particular situation. But with Sarah, from Sarai to Sarah, it, it was. Um, and that's kind of the key. Perhaps that could be that could be the answer, the key, the key example. Um, so, and I yeah, and I think you're you're right there. That's and I think it also comes back to this idea of um, running away from problems instead of confronting confronting problems. Um, yeah. Not again, not saying that when someone has that, like changes their name, whatever is is running away, but particularly on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Whereas where it's a very specific time we are looking at an evil decree rather than something which is individual, but rather as a community, we want to, to enter into a new year very much as ourselves, right? Maybe you, as you said before, remind, remind me, what do you do? Remind me again, sorry, you, you work, what's, what job do you do again? You work in... Uh, in Xerox, sorry. In Xerox. So, exactly, so right. So, a, only a company will only ever change its name when it's like hit. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but Xerox, everyone like knows of Xerox and mm -hmm. would never, even if Xerox had like a bad reputation or something, something happened. I maybe you know business better than I do, but the Xerox name is so powerful, right? It means so much. It's, it would never make sense to change it. Mm -hmm. You have companies where they will, they're like, they, they go through some scandal or they just completely go bust. And it means they have to like go start from the bottom and start like then restart all over again. There was a, there's a TV show called The Wire, an American TV show where very long story short, but one of the aspects of the TV show is it follows um, drug dealers in Baltimore in, in America. And in order for them to try and sell more heroin on the street mm -hmm. they every day they'll like change the name of the vials of heroin that they hand out this day it's called like the bomb the next day it's called wmd this day it's called like the bomb 2.0 it's the exact same content inside the vial but because like the people who are buying it realize it's complete trash and like really low level drugs they have to change the name every single time so when, again, why am I talking about heroin? I'm sorry, about Rosh Hashanah. Anyway, when, <laughs> when you, but the idea of changing a name is, is like that last ditch effort. You want to enter into the new year yourself. You want to reclaim who you can, can be rather than, uh, you know, starting, starting completely from zero again. Um, let's take a look. Let's take a look at this Soloveitchik. Um, and then we'll, then we'll see, and then we'll discuss for a bit and, uh, we'll, 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 we'll finish off. Okay. This kind of, this Soloveitchik is, is a kind of a nice summary 
um, of what we basically, what we've both been like, discussing and talking about a bit, which is the first principle, the first idea of teshuva, of repentance, is that the sinner be divested of his status as a rasha, a wicked person. That, that the person who made, who made a mistake is that we remove the rasha, the wicked person's status from him. This can only be achieved, attained, if the sinner terminates his past identity, ends his past identity, and assumes a new identity for the future. Now, it is a creative gesture which is responsible for the emergence of a new personality, a new self. Right? That's, what we were t- that's why I was kind of, we were like talking about with like the changing of a name, right? Creating this new personality, new self, and maybe it being symbolized with a name change. Anyway, this creative gesture is precipitated by an absolute decision of the will and intellect together, okay? What is repentance? It consists of this. The sinner abandon his sin, remove it from his thoughts, resolve in his heart to never do it again, regret the past. He's quoting the Rambam here. And he calls God who knows all secrets as a witness to his resolve never to return to sin again. It is also necessary that he make a confession and utter these matters which he had decided in his heart, which is where we get slichot from. Now the abandonment of sin, i.e. resolve for the future and the regret over past divest, the sinner of his status as a rasha, they sever his spiritual continuity and transform his identity. Verbal confession is directed toward precipitating the bestowal of atonement. I'm just going to stop there for a second. Again, I'm not sure. I don't know what you, I'm, I'm not sure if I agree with. For me, this is a very old fashioned way of looking at Shuva. And again, I'm not like saying, I mean, Soloveitchik obviously is, I'm not saying Soloveitchik is wrong. I just don't, I don't personally viewed Teshuvah in this way. Um, yeah. I, I, again, t- I, 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 for me, Teshuvah is something where it's a bit too clean, I think, what Soloveitchik is expecting, like a complete new person to emerge from, uh, to come out from the mistakes of the past. Uh, in my opinion, it's perhaps healthier um, and a more uh, and a better way to to create new habits and new behaviors to kind of almost understand and live with in some way the mistakes of the past to not and, and this idea of cutting off the mistakes and transforming an identity i don 't like i 'm not sure that 's something that I necessarily connect to um, there, I, for me there 's something of of, of you know, keeping those mistakes with you to some degree, almost as like a reminder, a reminder of where you, where you, where you made mistakes so you can continue moving forward. Like when one, if you were to, you know, uh, if you were constructing a map and you took, went the wrong way, you would make a note and keep that with you. Of This time I took, I, I took a left and it took me to a dead end. And now I know not to go there again, not to throw, not to throw those instructions away. Um, what, sorry, what, what do you, what do you, what are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts? Uh, I agree with you in the way that Solveig is trying to like give us like an insight of what is repentance, but in a very old fashioned way. Um, I think uh, in modern days, uh, you can think that you can, for example, think about repentance as um, like ha- having like Hezbon and Nefesh and right. and and trying to see what is wrong with you and try to change that right what it's saying as well so basic is that to wish to be a different person and not being the same person you were before and so on it's a good idea but i mean as human beings we maybe can do the same sin so to speak uh in, in another location right so we are not changing at all. Right. So I think that every day we have to make a, like a personal introspection and to um, 
to see, for example, okay, uh, for example, I, I don't know, I steal a pencil in my job, right? So I'm not going to do it again. Thinking about that, you are, you are repenting for that sin, right? It doesn't mean that you have to put in your knees and cry and say, oh, God, I, I have sin and so on, right? Um, I think like it's changing, changing uh, some habits that you have. Oh, beautiful. In order to be a better person. That, that's what I think. Beautiful. You're right. I, beautiful. There's something else. There's also, there's, there's something here. There's a book. Um, I think the book called the 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 power of habit. Um, mm -hmm. It was written. I'm gonna say 2011. And anyway, it was a, it was a deep dive. It was like an exploration of the psychology of habits, right? How habits form in our mind, and then how one can change those particular those particular habits. Um, because essentially, the vast majority of the actions that we do the way that we speak, the way that we act is by habit, right? Very, very little or less than what we actually think uh, what we do is kind of very intentional, conscious thoughts, much less than we think. Um, and there's the, the idea of a habit, right? There is, there is certain triggers, certain behaviors <laughs> that lead to a particular habit. And it's very, very difficult, very difficult to ever kind of change those particular triggers or change those behaviors. They're just a part of who we are. What we can change is what then, what is caused by that particular trigger. Okay, a great example, easy example is I am hungry. I'm hungry. There's like a rumbling in my stomach. And mm -hmm. my force of habit is, is to go into the cookie jar and get a cookie and eat a cookie. And then the feedback I get is, mm, that was tasty, that was sugary. And that reinforces that habit, that habit to happen over and over again. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't, <laughs> unfortunately, no one, very few people can control the trigger of feeling hungry. That just exists. The, core, the, the result, sorry, the result of that trigger can be, okay, I need to now move away from going to the cookie jar and going to the fridge and getting a piece of fruit. And again, that's a very, very basic example, very basic example, but it kind of proves the point. It kind of, you could extract, you could move it onto other things, right? So let's say you're talking about a pencil. What was it that caused you to take the pencil whatever the piece is, right? Whether it's because you just like the idea of having things that aren't yours or you feel like you'll be, or maybe it's you feel like you're being cheated by your boss and not being paid enough. And you need to kind of, you know, stick it to the boss and say, you know what? This, you're not going to give me 10 extra dollars. This is my pen now. Um, <laughs> and identifying, identifying that particular trigger, the trigger isn't necessarily going to go away, right? And let's exactly. say in a particular drug. And that's why I don't necessarily like the Soloveitchik piece because the sort of, I mean, again, and this may not have been his intention, the Soloveitchik piece, I think, as you said, it's taught, it kind of, a, it's a complete renewal of a person. And I think that's in a, I don't want to say naive, but perhaps simplistic way of looking at how we can change ourselves. I think we should accept, we need to accept the, the, tr the triggers that we have in our lives. We need to accept what that we sometimes can get frustrated or some kind sometimes can get jealous or sometimes can get frustrated it's then what actions that they cause right that's where we that's where we can play that's where we can edit and adapt and change um yeah that's what that's 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 why that's what i think on the matter um <laughs> what are you what are your thoughts um, I agree with you with what to say. Um, to changing our habits to be a better people, that's something that we have to think like every day. Um, because as you mentioned, right, for example, like if you are very used to, yeah, for example, saying lies to or to take what is not yours and so on, uh, what you are creating is like a bad person within yourself. Uh, so to speak so right. you have to like uh, think about changing that in order to not do that again in order to like uh, 
don't know what else to say, like be like lit by the, no, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, uh, um, I forgot what I was, what I was okay, about try to say. Well, say, say that sentence again. Like, uh, what you need to do is like to prove yourself that you can be better than, than your, Potential. than your bad habits. Yeah, 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 that makes sense, that makes sense. Like controlling your ego, yes. that part of your ego, yeah. yeah. You're right. It's yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, I get you completely. I think yeah, you're right. It's also it's to do with, and I think that also connects with, you know, coming back to the very very beginning, kind of coming back to the very very beginning of the idea of tshuva. The, the this this idea of tshuva, right, which is the real, it's the acceptance, the realization that. The only person you can control, and the only person's emotions you can tr you can have mastery you can control are your own. Ego, an ego, is when you begin to think that you have the ability or you deserve to control other people, other people, other people's emotions, right? That other people's emotions should in some way reflect yours, right? When someone, if, if someone has like a very big ego, right? They think if I'm passionate about something, that means everyone should be passionate about it. If I'm happy about something, everyone should be happy about something. Or the other, the other way, if I'm upset about something, well, why, have, why isn't anyone else upset about the same thing? Like why can't people see the world like I do? That's like the beginning of an ego. Shuva is a realization of, sucking everything back in and realizing, no, I'm the only one who can really control those things within myself, right? Exactly, it comes back to exactly what you were saying, that um, the, the only way, right? The only way then to kind of move forward and to, to really kind of think about how you can become better people is to, right, is to reflect, is to like to change those behaviors, to change the way we view ourselves um, right, and that's, that's, that's what leads us to make stronger connections, not only with the people around us, staka, batarecha, kamocha, and also with the Hashem itself, with God. It's with God. Um, okay. Um, that, this was, I really enjoyed this. It was nice chatting. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, I, thank you. I, yeah, thank you so much, Victor. It was really great. To, it was great to meet you. Um, if I do, I wish you a Shana Tova, Gemara Khatima Tova. Um, I wish you all the best with everything, with your work, with life in Guatemala. I hope, I wish you all like Batzlacha this year, whenever you make the decision to come to Israel. May, may, it, be, may it be easy and speedy and uh, I look forward to maybe seeing you one day here. Sure, sure. All right. <laughs> Thank okay. you very much and Shana Tova, Rikamar Khatimatova. And to you too. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.